Well, you know, I have heard for years about RMC's problems, mainly with the Board of Trustees over the years, and I do mean years, literally decades. There have been complaints about the board. Uh, the hospital itself does not have a very good reputation here in the community and in the area. And so that's always bubbled beneath the surface. But this spring, last this past spring, I heard a rumor in Columbia that the board had decided to put some feelers out and see if anybody was interested in buying the hospital. Mm -hmm. I remember the last time the hospital was up for sale and all of the chaos around that. When I heard that rumor, I got a bit concerned, uh, mainly because of things that I'd heard about what was happening, what was not happening, that kind of thing. So I kind of started paying attention. It's never been on my radar because it's okay. not a legislative delegation issue. Uh, the hospital is owned by both counties. The board appointed was appointed by both counties. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was in the county council's wheelhouse, not mm -hmm. mine. But when I heard this rumor that they were trying to um, see if anybody was interested. That gave me pause. And then I sat in on their budget uh, subcommittee hearing and heard the budget request. And so my antenna went up because I live in this community. My husband and I chose to move here. We love Orangeburg. And what we need is a viable hospital. And so at that point, I thought about putting a proviso in the budget to say, okay, let's look at partnering with the USC and talk about how we can work together to make sure access for rural uh, communities is still in place. So that's kind of how a long drawn out answer, but that, you know, I heard the rumor, I said, hmm, let me, let me pay attention to this. Sat in on the budget hearing and it was like, okay, Something's, something is amiss here. Let me, let me just figure out what I can do. It has been a challenge, uh, mainly because there are, I was amazed at the number of people who just don't think it's a good idea uh, and want it to remain, I guess, as, as it was. And so the, the good thing is that I am the kind of person who believes in plan A, plan B, plan C, however many plans it takes to get the job done is what I believe in. And so I was not deterred by the opposition. I have not been deterred by the, by the constant opposition that is still there underneath. And because there has been constant opposition by some, not many, because what I've also discovered is that the majority of the people seem to appreciate the fact that MUSC uh, will be partnering to operate the hospital. But we're at what I call the sausage making stage now. And that is we've got to run some traps. We've got to make sure everything is done. I had an October 1st deadline for Orangeburg and Calhoun counties to do their part so that we could then move out of the way and let the due diligence piece come in. Now, one of the things, for example, when I talk about being flexible and needing to be able to have more than one plan, because we're pretty much at the end of the road, I think it's important that just as MUSC is doing due diligence, that the county councils and the new board do so as well. And to that point, one of the things that we've gone back to and picked up from the previous board is this notion of, is there anybody else out there who might be interested in partnering with us? And so the regional medical center and the two county council chairs have submitted uh, a letter to the South Carolina Hospital Association asking them to just kind of put it out there to their member organizations that, okay, we are in conversations with MUSC about partnering, just in case any of you might also be interested, and I think they set a January 6th deadline. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a new wrinkle, and again, that's why I refer to it as a sausage-making stage, because 
what you can't do is just have a plan and stick to a plan without tweaks mm -hmm. and as as events change as new information comes forward you have to be willing to make some changes oh, so at the risk you know i used to kind of eh, poo poo when people say gilda you did this i used to not want to take full credit because i didn't start it i was a part of it but I, I have since learned to accept the fact that, yes, I did do this mm -hmm. uh, because I did. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> You're exactly right. I saw in a paper where this group was getting together and doing a training uh, on rape crisis uh, for volunteers to be at the hospital on call. And this was in 79. The group came together in January. They did that training in May, and I remembered my friend and said, you know, I'm going to go take that training. And so I did the volunteer training at the hospital in 1979 and started being on call. And from there, kind of did that for a few years, um, had gotten a job working at DSS, and I would go to, I would be at DSS during the day. Uh, and would go on rape calls at night at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and then get up and go to my job. And so the group, it started out as Tri Long Day, Tri County Citizens Against Sexual Assault was the original name that it was charted. Came the, the people who started this were people from the hospital, from the Sheriff's Department, from the um, Police department. Right. And when I look back on it and think about how I used to be, because we used to meet in the old hospital, which is now the health department, and it was abandoned. And the county gave me space in that building for an office. And there were homeless people who would be in there. They never bothered me. I never bothered. I just didn't have sense enough to be scared or didn't have sense enough to understand that that probably wasn't wise to go to a full-time job and then at five o'clock go to an, a, a deserted building mm -hmm. and work in a deserted building three or four hours. Um, that, when I, look black, when I look back on it, I know that God had me. Yes. Quite frankly, we would not have been able to continue with as many school districts as we had. Um, that idea um, is, uh, is, is moving throughout the state now. The former uh, superintendent, Marley, Molly Spearman, was a big proponent of consolidation and during her tenure started easing districts toward that. And so you see, when we did it in Orangeburg County, the first time when we went from eight to three, I was a proponent of going to one district because I thought, snatch it off, just go ahead and just get one district. This county is too small to have eight school districts. I thought it was also too small to have three school districts. And so there are still... Too small you mean in terms of student population? population student population. Student population, student population did, did not justify eight, did not justify three, and I think justifies one district. And so when we talk about schools, we really have to dig down and look at the real, real issues with schools. And we can't just look at the school district without looking at what's happening at the state level and what kind of laws we're passing. Um, I am still very grateful that I did not vote for Act 388 back in 2006 when it came through and everybody was like, oh yeah, this is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. It's going to help homeowners. I asked then and have continued to ask, what about the shift in taxes to businesses and renters? What about renters? Mm -hmm. What relief do they get? And so I think, fast forward, the um, some of the ills of Act 388, and that's the school funding uh, mm -hmm. formula where we took the hundred percent, hundred thousand dollar house, you got relief. 
there is still a need to address that in the legislature. We just can't figure out how. Can't reach a consensus, I should say, on how we do that.